You're watching Telecom TV for Mobile World Congress 2018 in Barcelona. I'm joined now by Peter Zhou, who is Chief Marketing Officer at Huawei Wireless. Peter, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Huawei's made some significant announcements in the area of 5G this week. Tell me more about them. The industry has been talking about 5G for quite a long time. This year is not just a concept, not just something on paper. What we announced is end-to-end -end solution products can supply to our customers. And we announced the end-to-end -end solution be ready in this year, including core network, transmission, RAN, base station, and also terminal as well. And you've developed your own chipset to support 5G terminals as well. We have been developing chipset for end-to-end -end solutions. And this year in Barcelona, particularly, we emphasize the chipset for the terminal. This is the first chipset for 5G terminal in the industry. And also the terminal CPE, very small. It's also the first 5G commercial terminal. So how engaged have your operator partners been in the initial release of 5G, the 5G NR non-standalone mode? Right, um, first of all, Huawei as a vendor, we support both non-standalone and standalone technologies. And we will follow the standardization, that kind of timeline, and we make sure we put those commercial products into the market in the first time. On the other hand, we understand some of our customers in favor of using non-standalone at the beginning, so we will fully support that. We also discussing with some of our customers who are in favor of using standalone at the beginning, we also will have strong support to them. 5G is an evolutionary process. What more must be done before we see full 5G when we get to release 16? Okay, first of all, release 15, yes, uh, will be financed uh, somehow in June this year. But most of the technologies is there. The whole architecture and also the major uh, feature is there. And particularly, release 15 will focus on EMBB, which is the main services for now for our customers. And the release 16 will more focus on uh, massive that kind of type of uh, connection to uh, things and also to different kind of industries. So for Huawei, we will keep have innovation to work together with the industry to define the technology, to define the standardization. On the other hand, we will put effort on the research and the re, uh, R&D people to make sure the commercial product can be in the market in the first time, to make sure new business models also can be supported by all of these new technologies. And in terms of new business models, and you mentioned industry use cases, how important will network slicing be? Yeah, network slicing is very good technology which can enable different type of business models. Right now, the mobile network somehow supporting limited number of services, for example, voice, data, etc. The 5G technology, the beautiful thing is it will support different type of industries and also we're moving from mainly focusing on connecting people to connecting all the industry, all the peoples. And therefore we need technologies like slicing to make sure all kind of different kind of business models can work independently and also can bring real revenue to carriers as soon as possible. What are some of the significant developments that the industry should expect to see this year in 5G? And what in particular will Huawei contribute? This year, we need to keep supporting our customers in commercial network deployment. That's a very important uh, uh, step. A few carriers, our customers, already requested us to jointly build the commercial network. And probably in the media, you found that we already got 45 MOUs on that. We already started more than 10 cities, that kind of uh, 5G pre-commercial network deployment. So this year, to make it happen, it really 
the major tax stress. On the other hand, we need to keep putting researchers to do more innovations to the product and also to uh, work together with the industry members in the standardization as well. And the very important thing is we also need to work together with our customers, with third parties to develop the ecosystem, to driving the ecosystem for 5G, which is very important, including the terminals and also including the third parties to enable new business models for future for 5G technologies. And also in um, this year in Barcelona, you also may see our wireless XLab, which is a platform to work together with all the third parties to have innovative ideas on new business model, new applications for the, for the future. So that's just an example how we are working with the industry on developing new use cases and applications for 5G. Peter Joe, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.